Valentina Duron in her talk, The World Could Change Its Heart. Operation Smiles co-founder and CEO, Dr. Bill McGee once said, love by definition is self-sacrifice. Love is the decision to make somebody else's problem your problem. Two billion people lack access to any type of surgery. Only 4% of surgeries go to the poorest third of the global population. And every three minutes, a child is born with the uncertainty of a life with a facial deformity. Our world suffers on a day-to-day -day basis, and sometimes we're so stuck in our own little bubble that we don't think about them. The reason I decided that the world could change its heart was Operation Smile. Operation Smile is a nonprofit medical service organization who dreams of a world where no child suffers for lack of safe surgery. They operate on people with a cleft lip, a cleft palate, joint fingers, and even some types of burns. I came across Operation Smile here at AST when I was 11 years old and I had no clue what my life's purpose was. I remember being in the middle school club fair and seeing the advisor that knew my sister and the sign that said Operation Smile. I walked towards it and I signed up. 11-year-old me could have never dreamed of what that signature would bring into my life. As time went by, I started getting the general idea and impact of Operation Smile. However, I'll never forget my first medical mission. I was literally nauseous, and running through my head was the idea of me panicking and doing something I wasn't supposed to. I was also jittery because I thought, what if I don't like it? Or worse, what if I'm not good enough? However, I ended up loving my experience so much that this is my sixth year as a volunteer, and I have assisted medical missions since that faithful one in sixth grade. However, there was one medical mission which changed my life forever. I've always loved June's medical mission because I get to go the entire week from 7 a.m. to basically 7 p.m. I get to see kids from screening to post-op and pre-op. Screening is the first day of every medical mission. It's where all the patients come in and doctors run tests to see if they're going to be able to operate. It's the busiest day of the week. I remember I was walking to my post during screening when I came across this woman. She looked familiar to me. So I stopped and I said hi. She stared at me and then she proceeded to smile and say hi back. I'd seen her the past medical mission where her kid got operated. I'd waited those excruciatingly long and painful minutes by her side. Trust me, being next to someone while her kid is getting operated is not easy. And I asked her, do you remember me? And she said, how could I forget you? You stood by me in one of the most important moments of my life and you took care of me while they took care of my child. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. Me, a regular teenager, had helped someone so much just because I cared enough to sit by her side and hold her hand in a time of need. Which made me think, there are so many people out there who need help, and sometimes we simply ignore that fact. After screening comes a day when they begin to operate. I was stationed in post-anesthesia recovery, otherwise known as the PACU. And there I was, wearing borrowed scrubs, which were way too big on me, medical booties, which are very uncomfortable to walk in, a head cover, and a face mask. And this Brazilian doctor, which was so kind, told me and two other volunteers that our job this week would be to be a mom for a week. This would later become a joke that some people took a little too seriously since I did get the glares and the demanding tone asking if I was a mother that I had to awkwardly decline parenthood and I was just a volunteer. So they told us that they would bring in the kids after surgery and our job right then and there would be to hold him, rock him, comfort him. And then the most important one was to make sure that they felt loved and safe. These kids, they told us, they're scared, they haven't eaten, and it's the first time that they're gonna feel that they don't longer have a cleft in either their lip or in their palate. And in came in this one-year-old. He was bawling his eyes out and he looked terribly tired. And I remember they went, here, Valentina, hold him. 
And I remember being like, what, me? And then I, with shaking arms, my instincts kicked in, and I, hold, I held him. I remember the exact moment where he laid his head on my shoulder. It's a moment I'll never forget because it, it was comfort, and I felt I was actually doing something. And I also remember that in that moment, I started to think, what has this kid gone through? He's so young. He's so innocent. And he's gone through so much pain. This kid in his short life has had to carry the burden and baggage of his deformity and his socioeconomic standing. But here you and I stand, full of life, with a roof over our head, with food on our table, and with opportunities that we don't always go. And I thought, how is this fair? How do we simply live with this disbalance? It's so unequal. I rocked him for about an hour and a half, and then it was time to give him back to his mom. I remember being in the door that sterilized the sterilized environment from the rest of the hospital and handing him over to his mom, who looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, thank you. As the mission progressed, I got to play with him. I got to become close to him. I got to see him laugh. And that adorable kid you see up there with his big eyes and his adorable crooked smile, he changed my life because he made me notice that there is a world out there. He made me start to think how many kids are out there in need. He made me think how many are there in this country and think about how many there are worldwide. Many people think Operation Smile simply works on making the kids smile, making them beautiful. But I'm here to tell you that they're wrong. Because I've seen concerned mothers with malnourished children so afraid because they don't know how to feed their child. I know that half of them don't make it to their first birthday. Operation Smile taught me that there is so much to do. Despite my motivation and my beautiful journey, there have been some hardships, though. I've had to see people have to wait until the next medical mission so they can get their surgery. I've had to see the number of kids increase, and I've had to part ways with some of my favorite kids ever. However, one of my other downfalls has been time management because I tend to do everything at last minute. And recently, I had to leave for a trip for two weeks for an Operation Smile conference. I was part of the team that was putting it together. And coming back, having to miss two weeks of school, being a full IB student, that was no joke. And that had everything piling up on me. But then I thought, these kids, there's so many that have to go through so many tests. They have to go through hunger sometimes. If they don't give up, then what gives me the right to give up? If 11-year-old me would have given up, then I wouldn't be the person I am today. If 11-year-old me and middle schooler me who lost the, act, the election for activities coordinator would have given up, then I wouldn't be the person I am within the organization. This is my second year as the representative for Honduras and Latin American Student Council, and I am currently the president of Operation Smile. You can find me in the student program's website, which goes to show how far working with passion and purpose can take you. I've learned a lot, but primarily I've learned that the world has to change its heart because there are millions of people out there who need help. And it's simply not fair that something so simple yet so meaningful like smiling is impossible to some people. We have to learn to love. We don't have to focus on loving what is superficially beautiful or perfect. We have to focus on loving our imperfect reality. To conclude, I ask you one thing. When you get out of here, I ask you to look at the world around you, but not to look at the big screens or the beautiful buildings, beautiful people. No. Look at the, at the streets. Look at the people. And you'll see in their eyes that there is a need. And I promise you, and I encourage you to act, because if we do something, then the world will change its heart. Thank you.